The dust raised by the contradictions contained in the certified true copy of the Court of Appeal judgment in Kano State Governorship election has yet, is yet to settle as Chief Wally Alani Pekwesi and Council, the Kano State Governor Kabir Yusuf, has insisted that the appellate court cannot correct what he claims to be mere clerical errors contrary to the court's positions. Alani Pekwesi said yesterday that the appellate court lacked the powers to effect any correction in the said judgment having become fructus official in the case. There are fears that the simmering political crisis in Canada State in the aftermath of the CTC discrepancies might boil over tomorrow as stakeholders of both all Progressive Congress, APC, and the governing new Nigeria People's Party, NNPP, in the state announce plans to hold separate rallies in defense of their differing positions. Meanwhile, the Canada All Progressive Congress stakeholders are raising alarm about what they call plans by supporters of the new Nigeria People's Party to unleash violence against his members during a rally scheduled to be held on Saturday. During a press conference held on Thursday at the APC Secretariat in Abuja, the group spokesperson, Rabbi Obichi, called on the police and other security agencies in Kano to protect lives and properties of its people. Bichi had this to say in response to why the group is holding a rally on the same day as NNPP supporters. Since the battle leader of the NMPP, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso came back to Kano on Sunday, where he held a meeting of the party stakeholders, at the end of which they came up with a line of activities that included a leashing of violence to not only eliminate the APC in Kano, but also to make it ungovernable in the APC. Since the battle leader of the NMPP, Senator Rabi Musa Konkoso, came back to Kano on Sunday, where he held a meeting of the party stakeholders, at the end of which they came up with a line of activities that included a leashing of violence to not only eliminate the APC in Kano, but also to make it ungovernable in the event of Supreme Court judgment in favor of APC. We have, we have it from reliable sources that they are planning a mass protest on Saturday, during which key figures of the APC will be targeted, if possible, to eliminate them. The NMPP resorted to threatening to kill the judges of the tribunal, should the verdict of the court eventually be announced and not in, the favor, in their favor. Doctor. You're taking this. Well, okay. The first thing we can plead for this morning is to plead for peace, calm, and order in Kano. Because the situation we're confronted with is not just Rabi Ubishi, uh, who is leading the APC stakeholders uh, uh, campaign organization, the Garou campaign organization, uh, that is talking about a rally. The NMPP is also talking about a rally tomorrow. And one of the points made by uh, Director General Garou uh, campaign organization, Rabi Ubishi, is that the uh, NMPP is planning a rally tomorrow in Kano. When the question was put to him that, look, I ho we hope that there will be no clash. He said, no, there will be no clash. After all, Kano is big enough a space for anybody to hold rallies. And he was calling on the security agencies to ensure that they prevent the NMPC, NMPP from coming after APC members. That was his allegation. And that NMPP is targeting NMPC, uh, APC stores in Kano. So he says they are holding a, their own rally in defense of democracy and peace in the state. Our emphasis is on peace in Kano state, a potentially volatile situation with one faction, one party, taking a different interpretation of the ruling of the Court of Appeal in the matter of the gubernatorial election in that state, and the other party also taking uh, a different interpretation. The security agencies have their work cut out for them to ensure that there is peace in Kano. However, to go back to uh, the Court of Appeal ruling, which has now uh, generated this uh, furore, this potential chaos, this hazardous, potentially hazardous situation in Kano. Now, we made a point that 
if you look at the sequence of the judgment, this, the, the judgment taken together dismissed Governor Abba Yusuf and to that extent upheld the ruling of the uh, tribunal, which gave its ruling on September 30. However, the problem is with the lead judgment by Justice Adumain, where contradictions were observed at page 67, in which Justice Adumain ruled on one part in favor of the appellant and ruled on the other hand against the uh, first respondent, creating that contradiction. But it was a three member panel. I said that yesterday. The two other members of that panel dismissed the appeal. And so if you go by the rule of majority, two to one, you know, Governor Abba Yusuf was dismissed by the Court of Appeal, upholding the tribunal. And I talked about lack of diligence on the part of uh, uh, Justice Adumain. In fact, you may say carelessness. The chief registrar has said that, oh, this is due to clerical errors. Well, nobody may believe that that is just a clerical, uh, a clerical error or that it will fall under the slip rule, as it is known in law. So, you know, this is where we have found ourselves. How can a judge read the judgment in court and it will be different from what is in the certified true copy? That takes me now to the position of uh, Chief Wale Olanikwekun, S-A-N-O-O-N. Chief Wale Olanikwekun is talking about procedure. He's talking about the administrative of justice. He's insisting on what the law says. The registrar, the deputy chief registrar of the Court of Appeal says they are waiting for applications from the parties involved in the case for the clerical errors to be corrected. Chief Olani Kwekun says, to the best of his knowledge, nobody has applied for any correction. The uh, deputy registrar then goes ahead and contacts the parties involved and ask them to return the CTC. And uh, Chief Oloa Nipekun SAN, who is counsel at the Court of Appeal uh, level uh, for Governor Abba Yusuf, says, no, you cannot. Because the appeal court is already a functus official. What that means in law is simply that if you have taken a decision on a particular matter as a court of reference, you cannot go back and correct yourself. Because it, we run an appellate system. Under the appellate system, what you for Wallolani is simply saying is that the slip rule, even if uh, it's an issue at the level of the Court of Appeal, it's only the Supreme Court that can correct it. So the, our jurisprudence recognizes that errors can be made. So if a lower court makes an error, it is the higher court that would uh, correct it. And in any case, the Court of Appeal is found to official, again, because of the limitation of time, time yeah. which is a, an important issue in election matters. Almost every judgment that has been given by the tribunals, by the courts of appeal, by the court of appeal, states clearly that election matters are sui generis. Part of the reason they are sui generis is that, you know, they are limited by time under section 285 of the 1999 constitution. And Wale Olani Kwekun has quoted section 285 sub 7, which says, you know, simply that, look, you have 60 days within which to determine a particular matter coming from the tribunal as a court of appeal. You, hold, you, you hear and you decide within 60 days. It says within because in his, uh, uh, you know, submission, he, 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 he put the emphasis on within. And that by November 18, the appeal court had already, you know, determined the matter and he could not go back to it. So this is Solani Kwekun SAN teaching uh, the Court of Appeal registrars uh, elementary law uh, because he says this is trite in law. Anyway, the registrar and the deputy registrar and whatever, they are on the administrative side of it. So there may be a presumption that, you know, <laughs> the law is not really their matter. They are just administrators. But it's good that, you know, they've been reminded of the fine parts of law. So where are we now? All the parties not filing an application for correction. Order, order 23, Rule 4 of the uh, Court of Appeal Handbook, as quoted by the Deputy Chief Registrar, the matter is now going to the Supreme Court. 
Chief Olani Kwekun made a point again about time limitation and said, look, you have 14 days within which to file your notice and grounds of appeal before the uh, Supreme Court and the particulars of error, particulars of misdirection, as uh, the NMPP has done as a political party. So you want people to return the CTC and then you take more time after wasting five days so that that will put an unnecessary burden on the uh, litigants. So on the point of law and procedure, you know, I think, uh, and the administration of justice, I think Olani Kwekun SAN is very correct. The other part to worry about is the threat of violence because the, the Yoruba community in Kano is now adding an ethnic dimension to, to the crisis in Kano. The uh, spokesperson for that group, Ola uh, uh, you know, has come for Ola Lekon, Ola that's the name of the spokesperson for the concerned Yoruba community in Kano. He's now saying that the, the narrative is going about in Kano, that the reason they want to remove Abba Yusuf is because uh, a Yoruba man is president. Well, I don't think that the law court is going to look at that because sentiments and sympathies are not part of the consideration uh, of law. The court will look at the law as it is. So one thing has to be said. I think in the interest of peace in Kano, both parties should not hold a rally tomorrow. Because there is no how. There is no how, I repeat, that you're not going to have both parties have a rally without them clashing. The clashes had started in Kano. Some members of the NMPB tried to hold a rally a couple of days. We saw it degenerated with the police. It has gotten to a point that I told them to get the troops out. I would like to beg both political parties, the APC and the NMPB, not to hold any rally in Kano to save lives and save destruction of property. Kano can be very volatile politically. And we saw it play out. Many elections passed. We saw it play out a couple of days ago. So both political parties should seize on this. Secondly, there's a lot more that needs to be done as regards our court. So it had to take Wale Oladipeku to remind the court, even if Dr. Bati, you are trying to exonerate the, <laughs> the registrar of the appeal court, it had to take Chief Wale Oladipeku to remind them that at first they are focused official because it's time bound. So is it that there's nobody that advises them? What kind of counsel? The registrar seek before he came out with that statement. There was a clerical error. We'll correct it. There yeah, was a one verified report that they are trying to get a correct version out there. So if Mr. Wolio Nadikweku did not, chief, I mean chief, chief, chief Wolio yeah. did not reinforce the law and the need to follow the law, the appeal court will go ahead and also violate the law with the registrar? Since this ought to go to the appellate court or a higher court? So you see, it just shows that we have a lot of imbalance in our country as we speak today, as regards our legal system. And that's why I keep calling on both parties, please do not do any protest, I beg. Because a lot of slant will be read into it. Let's just wait for the Supreme Court to make a final determination on the matter. And whatever final determination is made on the matter, we now need to think of how to heal Kano. Because this has upset the equilibrium in Kano as we speak. And if care is not taken at healing Kano, we don't want any crisis to erupt in Kano. We beg for peace this morning.